Driving an RV versus driving a car, they have completely different fields. And when I say RV, I'm mainly referencing a motorhome and specifically for my example in this video, a class B motorhome, which is like a, a bigger minivan, but a cargo van more or less. And I drove a cargo van once when I had electrical contracting business. I had a Ford E250 cargo van and it was my primary vehicle. And so I really didn't enjoy the drive. You know, when you put all your windows down in a big van like that, you normally, you don't have a sunroof, there's stuff rattling in the back, there's different visibility. You can't really see in the back, you have to use your side, uh, side view mirrors and your side view mirrors are usually bigger to cover more circumference of the surrounding area. There's just not as a freeing and relaxing of a drive, driving a big rig, even if it's a small class B cargo van type thing, it's not as an enjoyable drive as a car SUV. There's no way around that. Um, because again, I have some experience in driving a cargo van. So if I were to buy a class B, one of the negatives that is not so obvious is losing the enjoyability of driving a small compact car or SUV like I currently have. I currently have a Jeep Renegade. So I would lose, you know, my sunroof down, my windows down, driving by the beach, enjoying that drive. Of course, losing the fuel efficiency of a car or small SUV because even the smallest of class B or motorhome, it's still going to take at least 15, 15 miles per gallon, maybe a little bit better. And so it's something to be considered. If you're in the market and if you're thinking of having your RV or motorhome as your primary vehicle as well as your camping and sleeping vehicle, there's going to be something missing with regards to the joy of the road. And that's something you have to factor into the equation that isn't so obvious, at least for me expressing how I view things based on my experience. So I think about that. I want to share that with you. And I want you to think about that. If you're going to, even if you're going to tow a vehicle for the amount of time you tow it, you know, you just have to remember that you are now almost like a truck driver. Okay. You uh, have to think more consciously of every turn you make going into the gas station, clearing certain angles, uh, parking. Even the Class B I was looking at, it can park. It's 18 foot long. It can park in a regular parking space, but you have to cut the corners differently. You have to um, be more conscious of your clearance ranges and heights and surroundings because you are driving a bigger vehicle and it requires a higher level of alertness, of it's just a lack of ease. You know, a small car or a small SUV has a different feel. And so you're losing a little bit of the love and the drive and the passion of the open road, at least for me. You're gaining some comfort in having a great van where you can stand up, walk around, sleep, eat, go to the bathroom, shower. But you're losing some of the flexibility and enjoyment of the open road. So just want to make a mental note of that. And I want to document in the video the difference between driving a big rig and a car and some nuances to think about on your journey and selecting a vehicle if you're thinking about the nomadic life. If you like these videos, I appreciate it if you click the thumbs up button, share the video, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace and love.